What's going on guys, King Strats here, back another video on the channel, and today we have got a special episode for you guys. This was so popularly asked on every platform, including YouTube, all of the other ones as well, but people wanted me to try these crumble cookies, so I finally bit the bullet and ordered the crumble cookies. There's not one near me, but you can order it. Cost me 40 bucks, but I wanted to put out this content for you guys. You guys, one of my take on crumble cookies. It is a specialty cookie shop that's based out of Utah, and it went really, really, really viral on, I believe, TikTok first, but it's all over the place at this point. I consider myself a bit of an expert on the high-end cookie game because I've been reviewing them for about four years. So I've done probably about, I don't know, eight or nine different high-end cookie companies. When I say high-end, I mean you costs about this one was twenty six dollars plus the shipping came up to forty usually they're around there for about five or six cookies so that is what we have today if you don't know how crumble works basically they change their lineup every single week and have a different one so we got the lineup I ordered these on Friday, so they got here uh, today, and we are going to do them right when they got to my door, so I stopped what I was doing and got to the weekly lineup. So drop that thumbs up. Of course, I did this for you guys. I don't really have super high expectations, um, but I'm going to do this and be as honest and as non-biased as possible. If I don't like them, if I think they're overpriced, whatever, you're going to hear it exactly from me today. So drop thumbs up for your boy, like subscribing, all the cringy YouTube stuff. But let's get into the cookies. I got my little cheat sheet over here, which is the weekly lineup. And we will start right over here on the, no, let's do the, let's do, okay, now we'll start on the right. We'll do it right. Let's do this one first. I did put these in the oven, so they are a little warm. Um, 350 for five minutes. It says so right here. So that's the exact directions, oven 350, five minutes, followed them to a T. This one is the cookies and cream one. Um, the size on this, these cookies for me, I noticed that they're a little larger, but they're thinner. A lot of the high-end cookie ones will usually be smaller, but like a thicker cookie. So I'm not sure how to make of that and what I'm doing, but cookies and cream got chocolate and vanilla uh, cookies, and it's topped with white chocolate drizzle and cookie pieces. So there's the cookies and cream aspect. Let's just bite into these and get it moving. First thing I noticed, lots and lots and lots of a marbling in here, like they said. So they are accurate on that. The white chocolate on the top gives it a nice little contrast. I would be lying if I said this cookie was trash. It is, in fact, a good cookie. Let's get one more bite. But with that being said, there's not really much that separates this cookie from the other high-end cookies as well. It more comes down to what your budget is. And if you think that buying this cookie is worth $4, I'm not going to say that you're wrong. But what I will say is this. I wouldn't personally go out of my way to buy any of these cookies. I don't think that you're gonna miss much, especially with like the regular ones. If you've had a cookies and cream cookie that you made yourself or you bought from a store-bought place, the difference is not that noticeable that you say, okay, I'm gonna buy this when you can buy an entire package of them for under $10. Or the ingredient that it takes to make it. Again, Anybody who says these cookies are bad, I don't know what you think about them that are bad, but there's nothing that separates it. It just comes down to me that I feel like for budgetary reasons, getting this and paying 40 bucks to get it, it's nothing that I'm just like, oh my goodness, I would totally do it again. But now that I have them, it's a good cookie. I see little pieces in here as well. It looks like I got a little white chocolate chip or something right about in the middle where my finger is, but it's good. On this cookie scale, comparing it to the other ones, I would give it about a seven. It's good, but nothing that I'm like, oh my goodness. That is my honest opinion. Let's move on to the next cookie. This next one right here, let's see if I can pick this bad boy up. See, oh, okay, well, there that goes. Even better, we got a cross section. They call them crumble for a reason because they are crumbling apart, but that's how usually these cookies are. The more you cook them, the more they're just gonna fall apart because there's a lot of dense ingredients in them. But this is the hot chocolate, so it's a, 
spooky movie not included. Oh, that's kind of corny. <laughs> it's a gooey chocolate cookie topped with a pool of melted chocolate. Yes, that's there. And mini Molo bites. And yeah, that's pretty straightforward. All right, let's just, you know, okay. This one's good. Very dense. Very fudgy. Yeah, man. The mallow pieces on the top, even after I put these in the oven, you can tell they're fake. I guess they're going for that accuracy because that's also a marshmallow over here, which we'll get to. But the pieces are crunchy. Like you notice will be crunchy. Lots of chocolate on the top. The chocolate on the top reminds me of Hershey's chocolate. It very well might be just melted because that's the flavor I'm getting, just like a Hershey bar. But I do like the fact that this cookie eats like a brownie. It's very dense and very fudgy. But with that being said, let me get a little. That's why I'm not choking. There's nothing about that cookie that I haven't had before. Again, I've had a ton of these types of brands. And people saying that this one's noticeably better than any of the other ones, I don't really know where you're going with that. If you've had this for the first time, I think you'd be floored by it if you've never tasted anything from this higher end market cookie. It is very good, but the same thing goes. If you're a decent baker, or you know somebody who's a decent baker, save your money. This one is a little bit better than that one. I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. Again, there's nothing wrong with these cookies whatsoever. But if you're comparing it to that same genre, there's nothing about it that just blows me away. Third one on the crumble list. One of my favorite underrated flavors, oatmeal raisin. This one's a little bit thicker, I notice already. So it's got a little more of a width, not the width, but the depth to it. You can see compared to the other ones that are a little more flat. They're like probably about this all the way across. Oatmeal cookies are pretty straightforward. So what it says, I'm just reading off their own description. Chunky oatmeal cookie bursting with sweet, delicious raisins. Fair enough. Oh, that's got chocolate on here. So let's go on this side. I love a good oatmeal raisin cookie. Same thing. When you get these higher end cookies, it's just very like the the density on these is so much more noticeable than if you get like say a Toll House cookie. You'll notice how much of a dense bite it is. Almost similar to if you were getting like a Pazuki or something that was a little bit thicker. Little cross section. Lots of raisins in here. I don't want to chew and start spitting cookie crumbs out on anybody's face. But it's the same thing. The theme is very much recurring at this point. It is a good oatmeal raisin cookie. But if you're telling me that this cookie is worth, you know, five bucks or whatever that it costs. Honestly, there's not much of a difference between if you go to like Subway and get one of those. It's a good cookie. I, it's just nothing about these are, are blowing me away. I would definitely eat them again, but it would have to be something near me that I just felt like it was a point of convenience. From a high-end cookie standpoint, this one, honestly, I've had better oatmeal raisin cookies from these high-end places. I would probably give this a six. It's still very good, but... There's nothing about it that is just like, oh my goodness, this thing blows me away. I feel like I'm going to say that a lot. But we are getting into some of the cookies that are much higher rated from people that have told me about Crumble. Props for using lots of raisins, though. I feel like oatmeal raisin. If you don't put enough raisins in it, it's just oatmeal. But it's good. Next up, let's get into the fun stuff. Got the s'mores. I love me a s'mores cookie. I love s'mores in general. So we've got graham cracker cookie. That's a nice touch. Milk chocolate chips, toasted marshmallow, that is a marshmallow that I'm looking for. Drizzle of chocolate, and then it says it has graham cracker crumbs on the top. Oh, I do see them. Okay, so they are there, right there by my thumb. 
I feel like I want to go in for the nucleus. I'm going to bite the... Can I get this? Like, can I get this right? No, I'm not going to get it. We're just going to have to go in. Let's just do this. Yeah, let's just go right for this center right here. That's why I get all the marshmallow. Mmm. There's a big layer of chocolate underneath the marshmallow. I really, really like that. I would have liked to see a little more marshmallow going on throughout or, or like with the cookie because I have to get to the middle just to eat it. But, always got that. However, what really makes this one stand out to me is a lot of places that do s'mores cookies, they neglect the gram, right? You get chocolate, you get marshmallow, but there's not a lot of gram noticeable gram flavor on here. For a balanced s'more, you have got to have enough of all three. And they do. This cookie holds up a lot better than the other ones. Just by holding it, it's not falling all over the place. Fudge cookies tend to do that a lot more when you're buying these. And just from my experience, I more prefer these kinds of cookies because of that reason. It still has a good bite to it on the outside, but it's moist on the inside. This bite looks like it's going to be good. One more piece. This is definitely one of their standouts. I love the fact that there's gram going on on this one. Easily my favorite one so far. Mm. I'm a s'mores guy. I feel like I'm harsh on s'mores. And they definitely passed the test on this one. I'd give this a solid 9. It's better than most of the ones I've had from most of these places. Nice job on this one for sure. Okay, let's see what this one has. This one seems super crumbly. They are called crumble cookies. <laughs> cornbread muffin. Warm cornbread cookie. Good. Sweet honey butter glaze. I love the sound of that. And it's got a cakey cornbread streusel. Streusel. Sounds very important. First thing I noticed, very dense. Like that. Crumbly is all hell. But again, that's what these types of cookies will do. This one's easily my least favorite. I feel like there is a cornbread vibe to it, but not enough to call it cornbread. What kind of saves it is I do get a little bit of that honey butter in there, which gives it a nice sweetness. The streusel, I'm going to get one more bite because I don't want to be like, you know, a jerk about this, but. The streusel really doesn't do anything for it. This kind of just tastes like a decent honey cookie. Yeah, this one doesn't blow me away. I'll be honest with you. I regret ordering it. <laughs> Just me being real. So I'm going to put that one down. I'm going to give it a four. When do you hear me saying stuff like that? I'm going to give it a four. Four is fair. This one, just by looking at it, I know is going to fall apart in my hand. Like, I can, I, it's a forecast. It is what it is. So I'm going to try to grab this. as That's a piece already. Yeah, it's falling apart. But that's good because we do get a cross-section. Brownie vibe on this one for sure. It's called Dark Dream. I feel like if I was like an exotic dancer, I could use that name. What's up, baby? I'm Dark Dream. Oh, fuck. I'm gonna shut up. A decadent chocolate cookie. It definitely looks decadent. Packed with and topped with. Both. Packed and topped with loads of melty, gooey, semi-sweet chocolate chips. That's pretty straightforward. I know it goes from week to week, so I'm sure there's people who are like, oh, there's better flavors, but this is what they serve this week. And I feel like if they're going to keep rotating cookies like that, having to wait would be a little annoying, to be perfectly honest. Most places, like, you can just get the cookie. They come out with new flavors, and they tend to do it more seasonal. This place does it weekly. I feel like I'm more of a fan of the seasonal because I can get to the seasonal a lot more. Like, if I really, really like a, a cookie that comes out in the summer or the fall or the spring, I can get that cookie one month, two months, three months, build a little excitement, come back to it again. I'm not the biggest fan of the one week thing, to be honest, but I feel like it's a little different, so it's a good idea. Anyway, bite the cookie. Mm. 
for what it is, it delivers on that. Just personally, when I have a cookie, I don't like chocolate on chocolate on chocolate. I need a little bit of something to balance it. It doesn't say it's dark chocolate, but it has that bit of bitterness like a dark chocolate would. I know it's called dark dream, but when I look at the description, a decadent chocolate cookie. I feel like saying it was a dark chocolate would give me a little bit more of accuracy, and I probably wouldn't have ordered it, because dark chocolate cookies to me just don't really hit diffy. I'm just going to be honest with you. But with that, the bite is good. There's a, like a little bit of a crispness when you heat it to the outside, because I did do it in the oven. The inside is still dense. Um, this one's a little drier than that one, to be honest. I, I'm not really sure why, but it says that it's packed with and topped. Does that look like packed with to you? Not really. It just looks like they put chocolate on the top. I don't really see it going on in between here. And I've had these kinds of like really, really chocolate cookies from other places. And even being non-biased, the other places did it better than this. Okay. There's nothing about these cookies that are trash. There's nothing about this cookie that's inedible. I'm just comparing it to the other places, and I have a little bit more of a background because I've been doing it for so long, so I'm maybe a little harsher. The two in the back, I guess I just had like, a, like an inkling because they're the two worst cookies. This one, I would probably give a solid five to. It is good, but not my favorite. I feel like if you're going to pack this with chocolate, a little bit more milk chocolate would have given it a balance that I would have liked a lot more, which would have been similar to this, so I guess that's why they didn't do it, but... This one just doesn't move me as much. Going off of my favorite, this one was by far my favorite. I loved the s'mores. That one, I would honestly probably just rather get six of those. Um, after that, these were all like middle of the pack, sixes and sevens. They were good, but not great. Comparing them to the other places and the back ones, I don't really want to even talk about. I feel like the milk chocolate cookie, I would have gotten it, would have said the same thing about because that was the other of the eight you could have gotten. And there was also a peanut butter M&M original, which is like a monster cookie. Same idea. I like the other versions of it. I feel like if they had a little of those other ones that I've seen from week to week, I maybe would have liked them a little bit more. I would like to see a little bit more variety between them because what it looks like from the naked eye is that they have like four or five basic cookies that they go through and then they add two or three specialties from week to week, which is a smart business strategy. I think if I'm being completely honest, this place is the quintessential like the prototype of what social media can do to places. It is good, but there's nothing about this place, in my opinion, that makes it anything like the other places that I've had. And I've done, I can start rattling off brands, Fat Tea's Cookies, Big Fat Cookie, Levan Cookies, Fat and Weird Cookie, Cleveland Brownie Company, which is a similar type of thing. There's nothing that set this apart from this one. Um, it's not my favorite. I would probably put it, if I rank them all, somewhere in like the, the lower end. Like if there's 10, I'd probably put it like 6th or 7th. I've had worse. I definitely had some that are like, I don't even know why you're doing this. But this is what social media can do. It makes things go viral and makes people say yes, yes, yes. I know there's another one called Insomnia Cookies, which I haven't had. Um, if you want me to do those and I can get my hands on them, let me know. Um, but I'd be honest with you. I'm always going to be honest. Save your money. There's other brands that might be better than this. And also, you can probably make most of this stuff at home or find somebody that can bake and you can like half the price. The thing that gets it, and I would call this overpriced in this sense, is that paying, you know, $25 and, and feeling like, oh, well, some are okay, I don't feel like it's worth it at that point. They're not going to sell you one cookie. They have to sell you six. I get it from a business standpoint. I understand everything that's going on with this. Would I recommend you get it? If you can get like six s'mores, yeah. But the fillers and stuff, it makes it feel like I'm just not satisfied with it. Overall, still pretty decent. I would eat it again, but I probably wouldn't pay for it. That's the truth. Y'all always want me to be like, like non-biased. And I've always said this for people who are watching the YouTube stuff and not the shorts, because other people will see these in the form of shorts. I'm always as honest as possible. And that is my honest, honest, honest take. You can tell I'm being real. I'm not gonna sit here and spit it out and say it's trash, it's not trash. But the comparison game that I have, I don't think that most people that are doing this, frankly, do have because I've just been doing it longer. You know, I'm not saying they have better takes than me, but in this case, I've done this so much that I feel like I've 
I've got everything to say about it. I actually do have a few more cookie companies coming. Let me know. I wanted to do crumble on here. Normally I'd put this on shorts, but I wanted to put it on here because a lot of people, even on YouTube, were asking specifically about crumble. If you want to see more of this, you know, make sure that you're liking and commenting this way. I know that people are enjoying this kind of content because normally I go with the savory stuff just, but I wanted to do this on YouTube as well. How this video does will dictate if I do more sweet stuff because you guys are the ones that dictate where my content goes, but that's going to be the end of the video. Overall, it's all right. That's all I have to say about it. We'll be back though tomorrow, more content. And I love y'all to hand signs. They made it to YouTube.